Okay, let's go live. James Middick speaking. Uh, if you're thinking about creating an online course, specifically a screen capture, uh, and usually it's about you know pieces of software, something that's on your screen, uh, you're showing people how to use something, uh, I want you to think twice about doing it. Why? Because I'm gonna show you uh, sort of the updated version of Google's AI Studio, which I did a video previously kind of introducing when it, the day it came out, but I think they've improved it since then. And I'm gonna show you a screen capture or why you don't need to create screen capture courses. Now, um, before I do that, I just wanna put it in context just to show you how important this is in this whole space on how-to videos and why you're gonna to have to be careful if you're thinking about trying to earn or start and build to grow a profitable business if you're just gonna create how-to videos. Um, put this in perspective, there's four billion videos on YouTube right now. 51% of them are educational videos, and the rough estimate I got is about a, a, a billion of them, 25% of them are showing how to do something on a screen. So you got one billion courses being done, and you don't really need them anymore if you're using a tool like AI Studio uh, from Google. And this is the brand new Gemini 2.01, and it has something called multimodal live input. So that means that when we're talking to Gemini 2.0, it has the ability to interact live with our voice, not having to prompt like all of the other tools right now are pretty close to all the other tools, but we can talk, interact live in real time with the tool, but we can also live interact with our camera and also the screen. So if you're thinking of creating a course that is showing how to use something on the screen, that's something people can ask directly to the screen when they're working on the tool. There's no need for you to do a course. They can do, ask the questions that they have live in real time. Now, I'm not talking about not creating courses. Remember from the personally branded campus video uh, that I did about a week ago, I'll put the links below to these as well in the description. Of course, make sure to uh, go to the training sites.io forward slash join campus, join the community free where all of these resources are for you. Um, but this whole space, remember there's three kinds of education consumers. There's the DIY, the do-it-yourselfers, they're done with you, the DWY, and then there's people who are kind of DIY plus I don't have time and I don't have the uh, technical know-how to do it myself, I want it done for me. So we got three kinds of people there, right? Uh, DIY people, you're not gonna be able to charge for courses because all of that information is free now on YouTube, but this is gonna make it even more free and it's gonna change the way that you create content for YouTube specifically that is going to be free. So what I'm gonna do is I'm logged in here to the actual um, aistudio.google.com site. I'll bring that screen up uh, so that you see it. It's there right now, I'm logged in and what I did is I'm gonna show you what happens if you try and do a tutorial or ask how to use a piece of software. In my case, I picked out Canva. So uh, let me just go and make sure I'm on the home page here. We'll just go to the Canva home page. There we are. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to interact live in real time, and I'm going to show you how someone who isn't taking a course but is actually live on the Canva site, I would think in the next month or so, is going to be able to interact with the Canva site. But more importantly, Canva will make this available, but more importantly, the Gemini model that they showed can have this embedded in the actual videos. So just start thinking about that when you're going, oh man, I can create a course. I can be financially independent because I'm going to create a free course and people are going to buy it on how to use a piece of software. I don't think it's going to happen. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm logged in. If you're over on the right-hand side, make sure that it says Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental. And what I did is I did the streamline real-time on the left-hand side. And of course, I'm logged in with the Google account. And the URL is at the top. I'll show that one to you. Now, what I need to do is I need to be able to share my screen and I need to talk to Gemini 2.0. So in the bottom, there's three buttons here. I could click those in, uh, individually. Uh, but in my case, I'm just going to go to the bottom and I'm going to start recording so I can interact verbally uh, with Gemini. And I'm also going to share my screen so it can help me using a piece of software that you might have been creating a, a video for. Okay, so here we go. Just going to 
start recording. And I'm going to select my screen. I'm going to pick the entire screen, which is going to be. Understand, you will select your screen. So you can hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you okay. Okay, so I want to learn how to use a piece of software called Canva. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen, which shows the Canva homepage. Uh, so I'm brand new to Canva. How should I get started? Okay, you are new to Canva and want to know how to get started. Are you interested in creating a specific type of design or are you just looking for an overview of the platform? Um, well, maybe just a short overview, just for a second, but really what I need to do is I need to create a YouTube thumbnail. But again, I haven't used it, I'm not too technical. So what should I do? Okay, you want to create a YouTube thumbnail, but you are not very technical and new to Canva. In the Canva homepage at the top left, there is a create a design button that you can click to start. You'll then have a search bar where you can type YouTube thumbnail and select that option to start designing. Uh, okay, so, so I want to create a design. Okay, I see that you clicked on the create a design button. Now you have a pop-up that shows different options for different design types. Um, okay, so where's the one for YouTube? Okay, I see that you are looking for the YouTube thumbnail option. In the popular section, on the first row, fourth option from the left, there's an icon that says YouTube thumbnail. You can select that. Uh, don't see it there. Okay, I understand that you don't see the YouTube thumbnail option oh, in the popular section. I found it now. Great, you found the YouTube thumbnail option. Are you ready to start designing your thumbnail? Yeah, sure. Great, you are now in the design workspace. On the left side, you can see a sidebar with different tabs like templates, elements, text, and more to help you with the design process. You can select any of these options to start creating your thumbnail. Okay, so what kind of thumbnail should I use? I'm trying to create a how-to video. Okay, you want to create a thumbnail for a how-to video. In the search bar at the top of the template section, you can type how-to to get some template recommendations for your video. Okay. You can now browse these how-to templates. Do any of them catch your eye? Or would you like me to help you narrow down your choices? Um, maybe some ideas would help. Okay, I can suggest a few ideas. Given that it is a how-to video, you might want a thumbnail that has a clear image or graphic related to the topic of the video with some text overlay explaining what viewers will learn. For example, if your video is about how to cook pasta, you could have an image of pasta and text overlaying the image that says how to cook pasta. You can also consider using your own photo in the thumbnail as this can help viewers connect with the content. Okay, what about if I want to create a YouTube thumbnail? Okay, you want to create a YouTube thumbnail, what is it about? Do you have a topic you are looking for ideas on or are you generally wondering about the process? No, the, the template I want is about how to create a thumbnail. Okay, you want a template about how to create a thumbnail. I see several options in the template section. For example, how to make a thumbnail fast and easy, and how to create a thumbnail in three minutes. Do any of those seem like a good fit for your content? I found one about how to create a template in two minutes. Okay, it looks like you selected the Create Thumbnail in Two Minutes template. Do you want to begin editing this template to make it your own? Yeah, sure, what do I do? Okay, you can start by clicking on any of the elements in the template, like the text or the image of the man. Once you click on them, you can edit or replace them as you wish. Oh, everything's overlapping. 
Yes, I see that some of the elements are overlapping. You can try resizing or repositioning each of the different text boxes and other elements to make everything fit better on the screen. Oh, it's in the wrong place. Okay, I see that you moved the text box and now it's in a different position. You can click and drag the text box to move it to a new position. Okay, thanks, that's perfect. Great, I'm glad I could help. Is there any anything else you need help with regarding your thumbnail or Canva? Okay, so we just did a couple minutes of me actually learning how to use Canva. Of course, I did know how to do that, but um, just think about it. If you're showing a piece of software or you're showing how to do something in an application, anything that involves interfacing with the screen, this completely changes everything if you're creating courses. Um, what is missing from this course is your experience in the context of when the software is used. So any of the how-to videos that fit into the do-it-yourself grouping, the one where it was just how do I get around, how do I do something simple, it's done for you now. So I wouldn't create courses that are just slowly uh, counting on that kind of content being something that's saleable. When I was talking about the personally branded campus before, what I was referring to is the workflow or the series of steps that people should take based on your experience. And that's where your value is. Um, you know, a couple things just to think about when you're doing this is about your videos is I only ask questions that were specific to what I was doing when I was doing it. If you're creating an online course and you have lessons that are 10 minutes long, 15 minutes long, 20 minutes long, and someone only needed an answer to that one question, which would be more efficient from them? Watching your 10 minute video or talking to the screen and to Gemini 2.0. So not only is it going to change the type of courses that we create, but it's also going to change the way that we present content. And this is all going to present some issues for us as if we're teaching online, we're starting and building an education business, just kind of think of that as you're getting started. And again, remember, you still have to create courses. I'm still think it's a great way to create a business, education business, but the courses that you create, if it's screen capture related, you're going to have to fine tune things a little bit to make sure that the value that you provide is worth some people paying, more importantly, for your time and guidance to go through all of these pieces. My name is James Medu. Um, trainingsites.io is the site. Please join the campus. It's free. Like and subscribe to the channel. And, and I'll be back shortly with another great video that helps you to start, build, and grow your education business. Take care and expect the best.